The next part of the Legend of Genji story comes out in a few days on April 30th. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie guys, it's got me really excited to see what's coming up next. But I'm in the dark, just like everybody else, so I really have no idea what's going to happen. However, I do know one thing. I know what the new team avatar is gonna be like and what they look like and their names. Basically, I did all the research so you guys wouldn't have to. So without further ado, let me tell you everything I know about the new team avatar. There are six known members of team avatar. Avatar. We have Genji, Kelsang, Nami, Aiko, Maya, and Luan. Now, Luan is by far the biggest mystery to me. We know he's the fake avatar, and we know Genji's the real avatar, and at some point, they're gonna interact, and he's gonna join Team Avatar, and I'm just really excited to see how that plays out. Now that we know the names and faces of these characters, let's get to know them just a little bit better. First up, we have one of the more interesting characters just by his design. His name is Kelsang, he's 18 years old, and he is the son of Kai and Jinora. He's obviously an air nomad and he's mastered airbending. His design fits really well with this modern world narrative they're going with. His clothes are still the colors of the air nation. He still has an arrow for mastering airbending but his hair is grown out and he's not really keeping the tradition of shaving his head or, or receding the hairline. Which makes sense to me because I can't really imagine these modern kids keeping up with old traditions that were never really enforced in the first place. It seems like the air nation is no longer doing the tradition of keeping males and females separate, as every modern era air nomad seems to just be raised in a typical household. We had Tenzin, now we have Kelsang, which I'm not against at all, things evolve over time and it, it's a good change. In Kelsang's bio, it says he likes to make fan theories about his favorite show, kinda like what we're doing right here, right? Coming up next, we have Aiko Hibana. Now Aiko looks really badass, I really like this design, it's giving me Azula vibes. She kinda looks like if I knew Azula in real life, she would look like that. Which makes sense because in her bio it says that she attended the same school as Azula, Mei, and Tai Li. It says that this school that she went to really affected her personality. I can already tell there's gonna be a decent amount of parallels between Aiko and Azula and I'm all for it. Now we have the non-bender of the group Nami and I really like how they handled this. Nami is from the Northern Water Tribe and she was born on the winter solstice. That's pretty unique and I wonder if that's gonna lead to anything in the future. Nami is of course a non-bender, but she has a great relationship with spirits. Now, I really like this as an ability because Sokka had his boomerang and sword, Asami was just really good at fighting, and now we have a non-bender with an actual ability, and this is gonna change the dynamic in a really interesting way. Now, Nami and Janora have very similar abilities, so of course Janora invited her to Air Temple Island, where she would train Nami to become an air acolyte. Next up, we have Luan. Now, pretty much everybody knows this already, but Luan is the fake avatar. He doesn't know he's a fake avatar, his family doesn't know, most of the officials don't know, but there are some people who do. Luan is from the outer rings of Ba Sing Se, but when he was discovered to be the avatar, he was moved to the inner circle. Now, Luan would be a great avatar. He has all of the qualities to be an amazing avatar, except for the ability to bend the other elements. Surprisingly enough, he doesn't really like being in the public eye. Despite playing his role as a celebrity amazingly, he actually likes to keep to himself. Maya is the second to last member of Team Avatar. Maya's bio doesn't specify what type of bender she is, but we know her nationality is ocean folk and the Dai Li recruited her for being a very talented bender. So I'm just gonna assume that she's an earth bender with a special type of sub bending that no one really knows about. Maybe something to do with sand, mud, or water combining everything, I, I don't know. But we do know that she is very loyal and this caused her to be promoted to become part of Avatar Luan's personal security. Last, but certainly not least, we have Genji. Genji is the real avatar. He grew up in a sandbending tribe that roamed the desert near Wan Chi Tong's library. However, the Earth Kingdom forced all of the sandbenders to relocate to urban areas. So Genji was forced to move to the city and he hates it. He ends up always getting in lots of trouble. As we saw in chapter one, part one, Genji works in a repair shop. He spent years being the man of the house in a foreign area, which has made him very moody and overall just not very trusting of people. I really like how his bio includes him being a pro bending fan. I'm hoping because pro bending was mentioned in his bio, we're gonna get some more pro bending stuff in the future. All right, well, that is all of Team Avatar. Let me know what you guys think about all of them. Personally, I love Genji and Aiko. Be sure to check out The Legend of Genji in the description down below. If you learned something new, I would really appreciate a like and sub. Other than that, I'm out.